you can have a great operation that builds and builds and builds. And Ryan Casey is an expert in the area of rep management. And uh, I asked him to share a few quick goods on rep management today. So I'll turn it over to him right now. Go for it. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, it's funny. I've been in the, around for so long and um, this summer talking to some newer managers, just some of the topics we get into in the phrasing has <clears throat> come up with a few ideas that I've always done it, but you find different ways to explain it that makes it a little more clear for everybody. And I think I've come across some of those, but, you know, we do a lot of targeted recruiting with, you know, Facebook jumpstart, especially this summer, DECA, max preps, find those best people, PRs from our top people. You hear the region promoting fire number, you know, call those top PRs, which we definitely want to do, you know, campus, um, every office, because of how much targeted recruiting we have, is going to have some really sharp people that walk in your door and crush it in your office this summer. Um, however, that is not the norm. Um, it's, it's good to go off, you know, you, you want to go after those sharpest people. But when somebody's on your team, they're on your team. And either way, they deserve your best as a manager. So <clears throat> especially as a new manager, these sharper reps, they kind of skew your view of what reps are supposed to be like. Uh, some of you veteran managers, you've probably remembered that it's, it's harder to put yourself back in that position of a brand new rep. And some of you newer managers, I was talking to Garrett yesterday, you guys, Garrett sold $100,000 in less than two years in the business. And we we're talking about some of his reps, like they just don't do stuff. You know, like I, when I was told to do stuff, I just do it. And it's, if you were a really successful rep, it's hard to, to not see those habits. Like why doesn't everybody just do that stuff? But sell, selling Cutco is simple, but don't mistake simple for easy. This job is hard. This is a really hard job. This is a professional job for unprofessional people. And I, I tell reps in training, I say, this is the hardest part about this job is think about all of your friends. If their boss called them in the morning and said, you do not have to go to work today. If you do not want to, how many of them would show up? And if you ask your reps that, they'll be like almost none of them, right? Right you know, the, only the very top 10 or 20%. Well, that top 10 or 20%, those are your best reps. The rest of your reps are the reps that would not show up. And when you don't PDI your reps every day, guess what you're basically doing? You're telling them it's okay. They don't have to show up today. And so they're not going to 80 to 90% of your people, right? So this is, I'm going to post this next little part in there, but I, I recommend at least getting the first line down and a couple of them that speak to you is the natural default setting for a rep. Okay. You know, your computer goes, why you can put it back to the factory default settings. The natural default setting for a rep is the following. They are scared of the phone. They do not wake up early. They are scared to call people. They know they are terrified to call people. They don't know. They're even more than terrified to call people that they kind of know. Uh, they do not want to come in for a two hour knife selling meeting, also known as a team meeting, right? They do not want to answer their phone when they see the office call. They think 1300 is way too much for knives. They think 300 is way too much for knives. They do not believe they can hit more than a couple promotions for the summer. They think it's a pipe dream if they sold $3,000 worth of knives, that sounds insane. They think they're going to run out of people. They think their people, they don't think their people will buy. They don't think people are going to give them a lot of recommendations and they don't have goals they care about. That is what you're working with and make no exception. You might have a couple reps that totally prove that wrong. Those are the outliers. Those are not the normal. Now, this is the reason why we have managers. Because as a manager, you can influence all those things. But if you don't, they're going to die. And that's why you have a job. So I'll, I'll post that list there so you can see it again here. But um, that is what most reps think. And, you know, I've, I've heard newer managers say, this person just won't sell because they, they say they're scared of the phone. Well, so is every rep. That's actually a step ahead because at least that person's admitting it. Most of the reps don't even tell you. Um, you know, so that's, but that's normal, right? Most reps think that they just don't say anything. So you have to assume that nothing, nothing will happen without incredible influence from you as the manager. Don't expect a demo, a sale or anything unless you're impacting it to happen. So you're the one who makes the phone not scary. 
You get them to, excited to schedule appointments. You get them to have goals. You build their product and price conviction. You train them to be confident and successful with leads. You're the one that gets them excited about attending the, the team meetings and the conferences. That all happens from you. If you don't do that, that will not happen. So um, most of you heard before, um, I've, I've shared this on a lot of training talks, that a rep only quits the business when their experience does not meet or exceed their expectations. That's when reps quit. So half of that is setting the right expectations. You know, if everybody thinks they're gonna sell, go to uh, Mexico on their fast start and you know, their first weekend they sell 500 bucks, you set the expectations way too high, they're gonna quit, right? You have to, so you have to set the right expectations. Um, and then the other part is, is helping them make sure that they see how their experience is matching. That's how you manage them. Well, the same thing also happens with managers. If as a manager, if your experience doesn't match your expectations, you quit. Now, I'm not talking quitting as a manager, like I'm done, I'm calling the U-Haul, right? But what I mean is if your experience with managing that rep doesn't match your expectations with that rep, you quit on that rep. You give up on them. You think they're hopeless. You think they're just somebody that you can't make a difference with because your experience working with them is not matching up to your expectations, primarily because you have false expectations. You're expecting too much from them and not enough that you need to be able to give to them to help them succeed. You know, reps leave this business because the manager quit on them more than the rep quit on us. Because they're gonna have all those doubts. We have to believe more in our people, but more importantly, we have to set realistic expectations for the amount of work and mental management that reps need to succeed at this job. We have to know what is expected of us, what PDI really is. Um, so I, I just wanted to finish with a few, uh, I have about four or five just little tips on things that could help with this. Um, first thing is overtrained, right? Role play more than you think they need it, especially the phone approach. We, we caught that in uh, this, this week in Seattle, actually, where, where it was just um, not as much role play. And I stopped at mid, mid training and I'm like, no, we role played more and they scheduled a ton of appointments. And we had a kid come in for advanced training one. He's like, this phone thing's a joke. You know, it's easy. Um, and it's a big difference when you over train and role play and you did really simple training. Dan had great tips on that. Um, second thing I would say is follow the PDI checklist that I, I gave out in Olean and, you know, managers should have it. And I can post that again if we want there. Uh, I think I gave it out again at SMC. Um, but this is in use your PDI outline. This is where you influence your reps. Texting is about as shitty PDI as you can do. That is not count, right? That is not have a conversation with them. If all you're doing is texting your reps, they're dead. They're gone. Um, and then great web PDI. I was talking to our Seattle staff on Monday. I said, imagine if we didn't have Vector Live. Imagine if you didn't know when your interviews were, how many people were scheduled for them, who they were scheduled, what source they were, and people would just kind of randomly show up to your office sometimes and say, I'm here for an interview. <laughs> and when you tried to look at your statistics for the summer, there were no reports on it. There was no anything. That's what your office is currently like if you're not using web PDI from your productivity. It's a joke. That's not a business. If you're not managing your productivity, what are you doing? You're a business owner. You don't know when your demos are. You don't know when your reps need calling. You don't know when your reps need help. You can't look at their goals every week. Your whole staff isn't on the same page from the, uh, the conversations that are had every single day. Right? Every single day, you should be putting either a note, a temporary note, some task list of when their demos are, or a, a fire because they sold a homemaker. But if a rep is going out of town, I want to know if they're going out of town. If they have this going on for a few days, I want to know that's going on for a few days. Every assistant manager, anybody who's going to be counted on to impact that person should be on the same page. And so <clears throat> you have to, you know, good web PDI will allow your staff to build off conversations instead of having the same conversation over and over. You want to kill a rep really quick, have four people call them without taking notes, right? Hey, can't make the team meeting. I'm at my grandma's funeral tomorrow. Hey, you come to the team meeting tomorrow? No, I have my grandma's funeral tomorrow. 
Next AM. Hey, why weren't you at the team meeting? I'm done. Bye. <laughs> right. You got to mark those things. And even as a branch manager, if you're by yourself, you got a lot of stuff going on, put that stuff in there. It helps for field training. We can see all those demos. So great PDI utilize. And this part of web PDI is super underutilized is the attendance tracker. The attendance tracker is not just to confirm who's coming to advanced trainings, but it's a, it's a checklist for things that every rep needs to be successful for the summer. So the things I'm going to leave up there are advanced training one, advanced training two, day four PC, a couple of vector connect talks, which I'll get into in a minute. Have they memorized their page 16? And as I see those people do those things, I check off yes. So when I look at that attendance tracker, I want to see a blackout. If I look at the attendance tracker and I see this person wasn't at advanced training two, they haven't been field trained, they haven't memorized their leads, they have, there's like sirens and buzzers going off like, oh my gosh, this, we have not set this person up for success. They're going to fail if I don't start marking off these boxes. And it makes it really easy to identify when you look at that before I call a rep, say, hey, let me look at Dave Powder's attendance tracker before I give him a call. Oh crap, I forgot he missed advanced training one because he had his soccer game or whatever it was. I got to get him in here to make that up. And so now I, I'm not going to let anything slip through the cracks for Dave because he's a good guy and I want him on the team. I don't want him to quit after his fast start. Because otherwise he will if he misses too many, much stuff. So great web PDI. Um, the next one I have is the Monday check-ins. Um, get them daily, get those daily and the weekly goals. Um, get the actions for reps. So after a Monday check-in, you should know their de daily demo goal for each day. You should have as a task list when they're doing phone times and how much phone time, how many demos their goal is to set each one of those days. Um, and then track those in web PDI. As soon as you have that, you make your schedule with them, put it in web PDI and show that rep what you're doing. Say, see, I have your schedule here in web PDI. So when you check in each day, this is why I always tell you, call me between like six and seven. So that way I can put your stuff in. I can tell you exactly how close you are to promotion, how close you're pacing for your goals. And I'm going to help you hit your goals. And when you do that on like the day four PC, boom, all of a sudden reps are calling you more. Right. And when they don't call, you can, Hey, I didn't get your numbers for today. What happened? They're like, Oh, I was on a demo. Sorry. I'm like, Hey, no problem. So make sure to check in. Let's get you all set up for today. And you, you let them, you know, let them know where they stand on their goal. So that, um, that Monday check-in and then reps ask, how often should I call reps? You should call reps every single day that you can make a difference with them, which isn't necessarily every day, but it's every day that you can make a difference. You know, if they're gone for three days on vacation, they don't need to call in and I'm not going to bug them. If I talk to a rep at three o'clock and they just uh, talked about their sale and now they're going to go see a movie with their girlfriend, I'm going to put done. I don't need to call them again for the rest of that night. I don't need to go back through and just be a robot and call through them. But I'm going to call every single rep on my team every single night that I need to make a difference with. And in the morning, I'm going to mop up anything that I missed. Right. If somebody's set for the day and their first demo is not till noon, I'm not going to call them in the morning. But if their goal is three demos and they're only at one, you better believe I'm calling them first thing in the morning and help them get those last two demos set up. Now, going back to the Monday check in, here's the thing that I've been pounding into the staff as well is you have to understand this. When a rep gives you a daily schedule, they say, This is how much I'm going to sell this week. These are how many appointments I'm going to do. This is when I'm going to do my phone time. That doesn't mean for one second that they're gonna do any of it. None. So many managers are like, I got this rep schedule, they're good for the week. That's it, I, I'll check in with them at the end of the week. No, that means nothing, right? If anything, it's worse if you have that because you're just taking your foot off the gas and going blind. All that that means that when you have a schedule for them is that you now know how far you can push them without going too far. But you still have to drive them every single day to those results, right? If you just assume they're gonna do that schedule and you don't drive those numbers daily, they're gonna die. If you don't get a schedule and you drive the heck out of them every day, setting five appointments every day, let's go bigger, faster, faster, faster goal, and they don't have an actual schedule, you're gonna push them too far and they're gonna die. The Goldilocks formula is getting a weekly schedule for it from them, which you help them create something that's going to be um, realistic for them, something that's going to be exciting for them, something that's going to help them accomplish the goal that they're excited about. 
and then you drive them to hit those numbers that they gave you permission to drive them to. That's great rep management right there. So last couple tips, um, quick question, and I know you know, it's rhetorical. So, but if you have John Israel that said, hey, I'm gonna be in your, your territory for the next week. I'm bored, I'm just gonna come into your office and I'll PC anybody you want and sit down with me um, and teach them how to get leads. Would you take them up on it? If Mark Lovis was like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna come to your office for a day. I got one day open and I will teach anybody, any one of your reps how to sell if you want me to. Would you take them up on it? Hell yeah, you would have a sign up list and reps waiting out the door around the corner and they'd probably be, bring friends that don't even sell Cutco to do that. Well, you have all of that available with Vector Connect. You just have to build it up that way. They don't know who John Israel is. They don't know who Mark Lovis is. You got to build it up. But that's the reason why they're on page whatever is 39 or 30, page 37 of the training manual. Those are three specific basic talks that are great on mindset. Advanced training six is the mindset talk, right? It teaches nothing, but it, and, and it really gets them to do everything, right? It's a, it's a skiers by skis, couples by Cutco, right? Okay, they're, they're, not, they're not adding a million things to their, and that's the, the, the beauty of that talk. It's amazing. Um, you want your reps to get leads? Have John Israel teach them for 25 minutes. I remember having a rep, guy sold four or five grand for his fast start. This is back when you, everybody was calling the CGA leads. This kid literally got zero yeses, right? I think he had sold five grand and got maybe five people written down and got no yeses. He listened to that talk and it ended up being only 25 minutes. So he actually listened to it three times in a row. It's a little bit shyer kid. The very next demo went out and got the customer to pick up the phone, call and get a hold of seven people for him. I think that was back in like 2008 or nine. And we've been using that thing ever since. Um, so use that instead of sitting down for a half hour, especially if you're a branch manager, or a new district manager, instead of spending a half hour teaching your reps how to get more leads or whatever, first, just make them memorize the page 16 and don't let them leave your office until they do that. All right. But then at that point, if you want, need help with sales or whatever, spend two minutes building up a talk, have them go listen to the talk in your office is better. I've personally heard advanced training six and closing the sale over a hundred times just from hearing it going to the background in the office on there. Um, and then at the end, you spend three minutes saying, hey, what were your top takeaways? What are you gonna do differently now? That spent you two minutes to prep it, three minutes to do takeaways, and you just had PJ Lovis and John Israel, you know, PC your reps, right? Your reps are gonna be pretty damn good if you have all of those guys teaching every single one of your reps. Um, and then the last thing I'll just say is just don't cut corners. Don't cut corners. You have a schedule, you have outlines, you have leader's guide, Everything is in there for a reason. If you cut corners, it's usually your rep success that gets hurt the most. And that's on you. And it's not going to be on me if I'm running an office. All right. That's all I got, Dan. Thanks. Strong stuff.